Guns, drugs, and women forced into sex work dominate the global trafficking market. But there's another commodity showing up in the US. Young athletes trafficked to play high school basketball. You hear trafficking, you think sex trafficking. I never dreamt that boys can be used for sports. How many of you guys would like to go to the United States? Coaches and middlemen lie to fill their rosters. He has the gift of a silver tongue. They do it for prestige and profit. How much money did you pay the agency? This is the dark side of opportunity. I wish I could have packed up my things and just left. A world riddled by broken rules. Who's benefiting? Everyone except maybe the kid. And trick shots. They can't stop me. When it comes to the crime of trafficking, efforts to stop it usually look like this. So we're about two miles from downtown Milwaukee, and we've got the FBI, we've got the Milwaukee Police Department, and several other law enforcement agencies here. Our aim is juvenile. So if you see one that's, that's not, don't go for it. This is the second night of a citywide crackdown on sex trafficking. So they just had their first takedown, and it's the first one of the night. You can see there's a female in the back of the car and they're bringing her out. She would be the first of six young women rescued from the streets that night. There's a girl being pulled. She has her hair up in a bun. And there's a guy standing up in the doorway that's her film. Um, that's got to be who we saw. Yeah, probably. Hop back in. Yeah. Just got a call that they have a second takedown, which means that they were able to get another person on the street right now. FBI agent Reed Norris has been leading joint operations like this for almost two years. He's our guide for the evening. 10 four. What's the ultimate goal here? What are you trying to accomplish? The number one priority is uh, to find juvenile girls that are being trafficked, because uh, nobody should have to go through that. Are there other kinds of trafficking that you're also out there looking at? Yeah, absolutely. We also have a labor trafficking initiative that we're uh, participating in right now. Have you heard about basketball players, young basketball players coming from all around the world and being trafficked into the United States? So I've heard uh, a little bit about that, but not really on our radar. But human trafficking is a big priority for, for you guys, for the FBI. Absolutely. Sports trafficking would be would fit the same profile, where uh, they're bringing people in in order to take advantage of them. A year-long investigation by the Naked Truth into the world of sports trafficking reveals that kids as young as 14 are being lured to the U.S. by the promise of an education and making it big in basketball. But when they get here, these teens find themselves cheated, mistreated, and abandoned. Our investigation into the world of trafficking of student athletes starts with a young man from London who came to the U.S. in 2011 when he was 18. I love basketball. I love the sport. Everyone always used to tell me it's an opportunity for me because of my height. And um, I was always, you know, athletic and sporty. Deji Adekunle always wanted to play in America, the one place he knew he could combine his desire for an education with his love of basketball. It was the beginning of me chasing my dream. I had never traveled across the ocean to actually do something like that, so this is the start of a new adventure. His search led him to the website of a school called West Virginia Prep Academy. I seen it and I was like, yeah, man, this is the school I'm gonna go to in America. I'm about to live the dream. I'm about to go out there and just have tons of fun and be at this nice, lush boarding school. Go pass, man. Give me some. From looking at the website and corresponding with coaches from the school, Deji expected that he'd be living in dorms like this, attending real classes and training here. Instead, this is where he ended up, a dirty, unfurnished two-bedroom apartment. There was no campus, no teachers, no classes to attend. The school was a lie. When did you first realize that this was an, a legitimate school? The moment I got there. The moment you got there? Uh -huh. 
when I first got there, I actually thought, oh, this sh isn't what it's supposed to be. Deji had been duped. He says he paid an enrollment fee of $5,000 for nothing. When I got to the house, there was like a bunch of guys there, though. There was like 25 guys there. 25? Yeah. That's the one. This is the house? Yeah. We invited Deji back to Charleston, West Virginia, to walk us through his time here. So this was it? Yeah. So to the second floor here? Yeah, these windows right here. This apartment looked nothing like the boarding school he was expecting. And now looking back at the photos, how did it compare to reality? It's funny that you can just, like, just find pictures on the internet and just lie. Like, I don't know how you can, you know, how you can do that and just lie to the kids' parents and the kids and, you know, tell them that this is where your kids are going to be living at and, you know, like, take them here. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's pretty f***ed up. Deji had traveled thousands of miles on his own and was now stuck with no money to get back home. I wish I could have just packed up my things and just left, you know, I probably would have done that. But I couldn't just, you know, I couldn't just leave it there. This is the Peach State Summer Showcase. It seems like this that Deji longed to be a part of when he signed up for West Virginia Prep. This tournament pits close to 200 teams against each other in front of college coaches looking for talent. What's up, Chris? How's it going? What class? 2020? Where you go? Northside, Chris. That's where I saw you at. Lamont Taylor is a regular at these tournaments. He runs GetMeRecruited.com, a website for young athletes hoping for a spot on a college team. All right, come on, freshman, name, height, position, school, Instagram. Taylor coached youth basketball for more than 20 years before getting into the recruiting business. He says the number of international players who compete at these events has spiked. Even in this game, yeah. I'm pretty sure one of them, if not two or three, are foreigners, like 43 on the other team. Uh -huh. I think they're Nigerian. Uh -oh. oh, really? Is that number 10? Is he American? Actually, I think he's uh, Serbian. We counted close to 50 foreign players at the tournament the afternoon we visited. That's because high school basketball has gone global, mirroring a trend throughout the sport. A fusion analysis found that the number of foreign athletes among the nation's top high school basketball players has quadrupled since 2003. If you look in the NBA, it's becoming more and more international. 30 years ago, there weren't many international players at all. Many of these kids play for one of the hundreds of prep schools in the US, most of which deliver on their promises. They're not the elite, academically oriented ones that will get you into the Ivy League. These are sports-centric institutions where kids can play high-level basketball, position themselves for a college scholarship, and hope to one day make it to the NBA. Can you tell me the difference between a prep school and a regular high school? So a prep school is just what it says, prep. It's supposed to prep you for college. A high school, they play a regular season of maybe 15, 20 games. Well, prep schools don't have that restriction. They can play as many as 40, 45 games in a season. And that's part of the sales. We concentrate on your basketball. These schools have helped produce NBA stars like Kevin Durant and Carmelo Anthony. Nearly half of the class of 2019's 50 best high school basketball players also attend a prep school. Thousands of players count on prep schools to get them on the radar of college coaches. It's what Deji was hoping for when he enrolled in West Virginia Prep. My high school coach in London mentioned it. What did he say? He told me that prep school was, was an option for me. People that didn't get the right exposure out of high school or people that didn't get the correct grades to, to move on to, to college, to get college degrees. What Deji didn't know is that prep school basketball has a dark side. Bogus schools run by shady operators who exploit young athletes for money and future glory. In the case of West Virginia Prep, the school didn't even exist long enough for Deji to play a game. 
you can deceive anyone on the internet. Like catfish, people showing pictures of other people and claiming it's them and it's not them. And it breaks hearts and it ruins lives. National Human Trafficking Hotline, how can I help you? Are you in a safe place right now? The group of traffickers is actually pretty small. Um, and they recruit from all over. We see a lot of recruitment for mostly young adults. Jennifer Penrose is a researcher for the Polaris Project, a nonprofit trying to combat human trafficking. Many of the cases that come to light on the hotline match a pattern where someone's been told you'll have this amazing opportunity, you'll get an education in the US. What makes it human trafficking? Usually these are schoolboys, ages 14 to 18. And when they come into the US, the conditions didn't match with their promise. Many of them aren't actually able to get an education. Is this really trafficking? A lot of people would argue that these kids are coming willingly. This fits so many larger patterns that we see in human trafficking across both labor and sex trafficking, where someone might have initially entered a situation by choice, but it's far from what they were promised. Okay, can you tell me about that situation? Identifying student athletes trafficked into the US is tough. There are no hard numbers and plenty of incentives to stay silent. People are very much motivated by trying to improve their lives, improve the lives of their families. And so they can stay in what we would consider to be truly terrible, abusive, even dangerous conditions. What's tricky about these cases is that for a lot of the people, they don't identify as a victim of human trafficking. What kind of crimes do you deal with around here? The biggest thing I would say by far is, is, is drugs. Not a lot of uh, human trafficking? Not a lot of human trafficking, no, no. Sergeant Andrew Gordon had never encountered a trafficking case, but that changed after the South Charleston police were alerted to a group of kids that seemed to have been abandoned here. I've never had someone make a fictitious school up, lure people in um, from, from another country or from around the country and you know, tell them that they had this school with all these things, misrepresent all these things on the internet and start taking money from them. Never had any case like that. A week after police were called, they raided the apartment and removed the boys. Soon after, an arrest warrant was issued for the founder of the phony school. This man, Daniel Hicks. How many students do you have? Right now, zero, because it's a catastrophe. How would you describe Daniel Hicks? People that have talked with him, they say that he has, you know, the gift of a silver tongue. They say that he can sit there and tell you things, and he's, he's very convincing and um, very believable. Does he say the truth? If you talk with all the people that I've talked to, I'd say absolutely not. Daniel Hicks played a good game, you know. He done what was needed to sell to school, you know. Anyone would have been, you know. Food. Yeah, food. Uh, I don't think anyone was naive. You know, you have a school website, you have facilities and the pictures, you have application forms, you have all of that stuff. So what else, what else do you need? Deji had come all the way from England to test his skills against some of the best in the country, but he never played a single game. Do you think these fake schools can ruin lives? Yeah, yeah definitely. I know a lot of people that stopped playing basketball after West Virginia, because for a lot of them people, West Virginia was like their last option. Deji is part of a long line of students who have been conned by the false promises of a prep school. And that's not surprising. These schools don't come under the same scrutiny as public schools. Less than a third of all states actually require prep schools to have teachers, lesson plans, or even a campus. In West Virginia, all Daniel Hicks had to do was mail a letter to his school district with his name and an address where he could theoretically hold a class. With hundreds of prep schools around the country, there's plenty of opportunity for those who want to operate with their own playbook. That's a scam Lamont Taylor says he sees all the time. It's not very hard to start a school. If I wanted to start Lamont Taylor Prep School, I could, and, you know, advertise that I have this facility and we're going to travel and play, and that's not reality. From your just estimates, just a ballpark of prep schools that are well run versus prep schools that are not well run? Probably about half and half. You know, unfortunately, there's just, for everyone there's a good one, there's a bad one. The people behind these prep schools are usually basketball junkies who dream of the money and prestige a player might bring them. 
successful programs are often rewarded with sneaker company deals, while coaches may get job offers in exchange for steering players to certain colleges, and perhaps a lucrative payday along the way. For every good person, there's someone bad that's got a, a scam or a scheme or taking advantage of someone or taking advantage of, of a parent. And who's benefiting from all these talented players from all over the world? Everyone benefits. Everyone except maybe the kid. I think it's this one here. OK, so we've been trying to get in touch with Daniel Hicks through his lawyer in several other ways. And so far, no luck. He's actually just been released from prison just a few days ago. Um, and we're going to try and see if by any chance he's staying here. I actually have my mic on so we can cap yeah. capture the audio and, uh, yeah, see if we get any luck with Daniel Hicks. Hicks just finished an 18-month prison sentence, not for trafficking young athletes, but for lying about his scam to law enforcement and for selling heroin. I don't think anyone's fine. He's not here. Shortly after our door knock, we pulled over to take a call from a source who told us that Hicks had been spotted riding a bus downtown. Should be pulling in now. This is the bus. Let's do this. Wait for him to get off and we're going to talk to him. Is it? Yeah. Are you Daniel Hicks? Yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm Mariana. I'm Roberto, man. We've been trying to get in touch with you for some time. You know, there have been lots of accusations about sort of What's what you did. Up? and we'd love to get your story. Of, would you be available for an interview with us? We could meet anywhere. We agreed to talk at a nearby gym. Okay. Wait, yeah, we're ready. we're ready. Yeah? Yeah. What motivated you to start this school? I grew up playing basketball. That's what I, basically I did. And there were some kids in my neighborhood that were in need of you know, college recruitment and things of that nature. In his quest to bring basketball to his hometown, According to the students we spoke with, Hicks repeatedly lied to them. There are serious concerns about the misrepresentation of this school. I mean, the facilities, the accommodations, all, the list goes on and on. I didn't misrepresent anything because anything that I said that I was going to do, it all went through. I'm going to show you some of these photos so you understand. This is what the kids were yes. expecting, right? This is what they saw on your website. OK, exactly. They saw photos of pools. They saw photos of a beautiful apartment. OK, but you look on the new website, it was changed. It didn't have that picture on there any longer, did it? Hicks says he updated the website after deals with these facilities fell through. But Sergeant Gordon tells us that once they started investigating, the dubious photos were still online. I'm asking you directly. Yeah, me Do you directly. think that you in any way misrepresented what this no, school I was did. all about? I never misrepresented anything. That's not what Deji and other students tell us. They expected to take actual classes at West Virginia Prep, but Hicks says that was never an option. It was on a computer. I can take the school from here to Texas. I can put it in New York. As long as they have computer access, they'll always be in school. So I could have been in more. We spoke to the Department of Education, and they say that they don't even acknowledge online schools. They say they wouldn't have registered your school if they knew it was an it, online it, school. If, if, if it wouldn't have been if it wouldn't have been national news, they probably would have never said anything. But to clear their name, they're going to say whatever they want because it made them look like we've not done our job. So let's see: no classes, substandard housing, no basketball, and according to Hicks, a whole lot of misunderstanding. Nevertheless, as part of his sentence. Hicks is required to pay back thousands of dollars to students and parents. So if you weren't scamming anyone, why are you paying restitution? The reason why I paid that, to paying the money back is this. I'm not about to keep sitting in jail and, and not pay restitution, or I can get out and pay restitution. Which one would you, which one would you rather do? Hicks insists West Virginia Prep was just a failed startup. His defense, he could have come up with something better. If it was a scam, it was a poorly executed scam. I have a whole lot of other probably ideas out there that if anybody was going to scam somebody, I would have came up with. But my hard intention was to start a prep school. West Virginia Prep is not the only fly-by-night school to draw the attention of law enforcement. We discovered another scam that involved almost 100 high school athletes, including more than 30 basketball players. A scam that would trigger the most extensive federal investigation into sports trafficking to date. Thank you, 
Laura Donnelly is the type of person you turn to in a crisis. That's why school officials reached out to her when four boys showed up at a local high school, homeless and with no family. Wherever you want. What happened to these kids? They were promised all these big things and then they ended up being put into a basement and living there without power and everything they were promised was just shattered. You hear trafficking, you think sex trafficking. You think um, girls being used for their bodies. I never dreamt that boys can be used for sports. These kids came from another country. They were promised to be taken care of, at the very least be fed. Three of the boys were lured from Cameroon. The fourth, Stefan Nakic, came from Serbia. He was the first of the group to arrive. We went straight to practice right after, what, 20 hour flight, I think. Wow, was it a school at all? It was just a gym, it was a few offices. They uh, made us clean all the offices because it was all dusty and had boxes and stacked, it was like storage units. They say their school, Faith Baptist Christian Academy, made up of two campuses in Georgia, was a fraud. At the school's northern campus near Atlanta, classes were rare and living conditions were awful. Stefan says the founder of the northern campus, George Flint, a self-proclaimed pastor with a criminal history, routinely bullied him for money. My parents wired me $300 and I, I gave them the money and I told them, this is all I, my family has and I have no more. And this was supposed to be all paid for already? I was supposed to be in a full scholarship and I was supposed to be all taken care of. How did you feel when you had to call your parents for help? They had enough of their problems. Mm -hmm. And then knowing that their son is halfway across the world struggling to eat. You never told them? Um, not at the time, no. I didn't, I didn't want to put them through it. The boys reached their breaking point after months of neglect. So with the help of a sympathetic coach, they piled into a van and landed in Lake Wales, Florida. I didn't even know where Lake Wales was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what part of Florida. I didn't know even you know, where I was going. But we set off and just hoped for the best. Lake Wales was an improvement over their life at Faith Baptist. Stefan was able to join the basketball team. Their housing was still in flux, but Donnelly made sure the boys were cared for and well fed. We were happy about it because we had a real school to go to, our real classes that we were attending. We had real practices, you know, real gym, and it was everything we hoped for ever since we came here. So how soon did you realize what had actually happened to them? We came back to the campus and they were just sitting in my truck and Stefan was in the front seat and immediately grabbed his chair and laid the seat straight back and said, don't let him see us. And there was a man that I didn't recognize and all the boys were hiding from him. Another coach from Faith Baptist North had come looking for them. It was at this point Donnelly decided that the boys should come live with her. The boys weren't sure why he was here because they had escaped in the middle of the night to get away from this man as well as George Flint and yet here he was at their high school. She used her phone to capture these images of the coach, John Morgans, in the stands at Stefan's basketball game. At the end of the game, he's like, hey, good job, buddy. I'm like, what are you doing here, you know? And I say, you should not be here. We reached out to Morgans, and in a phone interview, he blamed everything on the school's headmaster, George Flint. Morgan said he came to check on the boys and that he actually helped orchestrate their escape from Faith Baptist. We reached out to Flint, but never got a response. When John Morgan showed up at the school that day, that's when we got the Polk County Sheriff's Office involved. It just got a little bit bigger and bigger, the more questions that were asked when they realized this was um, not just four homeless kids from around the corner. Their allegations led Homeland Security investigators to remove students from the Faith Baptist Christian Academy campus. Three weeks later, Homeland Security was on the ground in Georgia. They raided both campuses and launched an investigation in which the boys would become crucial witnesses. For us to be in the situation where we were in Georgia was just like, oh, wow. All we wanted was to be happy, go to school. It just made me, made me think, like, how many kids were there, you know, with us in, in Georgia, and, like, only four of us got, you know, a chance to get out of there and, and like, get another shot at it. The boys had their student visas taken away by Homeland Security. They were classified as refugees and only permitted to stay in the U.S. as long as they were useful to the investigation. Do you think that until that point they hadn't realized that they were actual victims of all of this? I think they knew they were taken advantage of, 
but they didn't realize how big it was and how many other kids were involved. It's been almost three years and the case is still open. No one has been arrested. If I knew that when I left Serbia, I'm not gonna see my home, my parents for the next few years, I would, I would have probably doubted if I wanted to make the same decision. Today, Big Camera Crew is here to doing a documentary on one of our young Serbian men. It's been three years since Stefan was dragged into the most extensive federal probe into the trafficking of student athletes. How about staying? Would you get man? There you go. Welcome. He's still trying to get his life back on track. Caught me off guard, God bless, God bless you, man. But his dream of playing basketball in the U.S. started years earlier in his home country, Serbia. It was May 2014. My dad saw how hard I'm working, how much I give into basketball, and how much I love it. He started asking around, and I heard from a lot of friends that the United States has a really good high school system and college system. His dad's search led him to a local recruiting agency. In Serbia, these businesses charge two to $3,000 to connect young hopefuls to American prep schools. A couple of weeks went by, and he just said, Stefan, there's a possibility that you go to the United States. What is your thinking about that? And I said, I love basketball. I want to do it. So. That's how all this came about. We spoke to several young men with experiences similar to Stefan's. So we decided to go to Serbia to find the source of this pipeline. First stop, a basketball camp, an hour and a half outside of Belgrade, the nation's capital. This is organized by one of the national sports teams here in Serbia. They have kids from five until 18 years old. It's uh, basketball all day, every day. How many of you guys would like to go to the United States? OK. Almost all of them. How many of you guys know people that have gone to play basketball in the US? How big is basketball well, in Serbia? Maybe the most important thing in Serbia, you know. Really? Yeah, it is really a way of life for, for all those kids. And we are preparing them for that. So if they want to go to the United States, how do they go about it? What's the process? Well, the process is, uh, you know, there, there are some agencies in, in, in Belgrade, in Serbia. Recruiting agencies? Yeah, they're recruiting uh, young players. To give them possibility to earn scholarship and to go there to play. They promise a lot of things, but when the kid goes there, the reality is sometimes something else. How are you, I'm Mariana. Hi, I'm Ivan. Hi, Hi Ivan. How are you? Welcome, Ivan. Hi, your whole family here gathered. Yes. <laughs> In 2014, 17-year-old Ivan Jokcic was hoping for a college scholarship. So he hired a recruiting agency called College Star to help him get to the U.S. And then they found you a school? Yeah. yeah. What school was that? Combine Academy. And uh, they said that I will go to study in Evelyn Mac School and play basketball and live in facility of Combine Academy. So you'd be studying at Evelyn Mac, but you'd be playing basketball through Combine yes, Academy? Yes. Basketball programs like Combine Academy, looking to add foreign talent to their rosters, routinely turn to schools like Evelyn Mack to provide the classwork needed to make their athletes eligible for a student visa. They also help kids like Ivan with the crucial first step to get into the US, a form known as the I-20. Were you happy when you found out that you'd been accepted to this yeah, academy? Yeah, I was uh, very, very happy, and that was my dream, you know. What is this? Medals. Ivan's medal? A lot of uh, gold. <laughs> is he a good player? Very good. Very good. Are you just saying that because you're his dad? <laughs> <laughs> While visiting him in Belgrade, Ivan showed us a letter that welcomed him to Evelyn Mack. It says, congratulations, Welcome, yes. you've been chosen to attend Evelyn Mack Academy, won a full scholarship, and then it says even their slogan is, together with your child, we can make the difference. Okay. While his education was free, it cost him $6,000 to train with Combine. 
This was on top of the money he paid the recruiting agency to broker the deal. How much money did you pay the agency? Uh, 3,000 euros cash. Was there any contracts or any receipts or no. anything like that? That is a big, big agency. And they send uh, many, many kids to United States. And, you know, I believe them. But as soon as he arrived in the US, he received some surprising news from his basketball coach. What happened? When we arrived in the United States, coach said that we can't go to Evelyn Mack school for some reason, and that some of us must go to work on the online program. According to emails between Combine and Ivan's father, Evelyn Mack wanted an additional $2,000 from the basketball program to make space for him. Combine refused and instead enrolled Ivan in an online school. Meanwhile, in your I-20 forms and to get your visa, it was Evelyn Mack? Evelyn right? Mack, yes. So you ended up not actually ever going to a classroom with desks and a no, teacher? No, no. I never saw a classroom. But the Department of Homeland Security requires that students attend the school on their I-20 form. So after a trip home for Christmas, Ivan's paperwork landed him in big trouble at immigration. When I came to, to passport control, they saw that in my uh, visa, an I-20, is Evan Mack school. And asked me, did I play for them? And I just, I don't want to lie. Admitting he wasn't studying at Evelyn Mack cost Ivan his freedom. He was thrown in jail. And uh, I were in a big cell with uh, 13 guys. 13 other guys? Yes. Why were they in there? I don't know, some for violence or a drug dealer or that, that's all I know. What was that like? Um, <laughs> I don't know how to explain, really. You know, uh, I feel uh, angry, scared at the same time. I, I didn't believe that happened. After spending two nights behind bars, Ivan was sent back to Serbia. His dream of playing basketball in the US shattered. How did you feel when you found out that all this was happening to your son? Bio sam ljut, uh, he was angry. Uh, me to što ja nisam mogao nikako da he felt bad because he can't do anything and help me oh, in that in that. Uh, yeah, your hands were moment. tied. You were far away, yes, many yes. miles away. There was nothing you could do. His family blamed College Star for Ivan's ordeal. And after he returned to Serbia, the family demanded its money back. Did they pay He, he says that just, but he didn't do anything. You never it. saw any money from No, any to... money, and he promised that he will find me college, because all of that he owns to me, and uh, he didn't do anything. As for the school he never set foot in, Evelyn Mack Academy, its founder declined to speak to us about Ivan's ordeal. The school is currently under investigation by Homeland Security and has been implicated in two other sports trafficking cases. Combine Academy, the basketball program that enrolled him in an online school despite the problems it would cause, did not respond to Fusion's request for an interview. We've come to Novi Sad, which is about an hour north of Belgrade, to meet with the owner of one of Serbia's most popular uh, sports agencies. Ivan Jokic used the recruiting agency College Star to find him a prep school, a deal that would land him in an American jail. We help uh, yeah, young athletes, especially basketball players, to find a good high school or college in USA. Mitar Kustudica's agency has placed hundreds of athletes in schools throughout the US. We are in contact with coaches. When we have a good player, we, we send them email or, or, or call them. And if you, they are interested for players, we can speak more about the opportunity. Have you had any trouble in your relationship with any of these prep academies in the United no, States? No, it's, uh, it's OK. And we know them and work with people who who I know personally. So we've been investigating some of these prep academies in the United States, and we've spoken to several students, and some of them came through your agency. 
They ended up not going to the school that they were supposed to go. They ended up not going to school at all and having online courses. They ended up with terrible living conditions, not at all what they expected, not at all what they paid for. Whose responsibility do you think that is? I, I don't know. That's uh, something what is uh, depend of a person to person, and they have different opinion about conditions there. And uh, mostly those uh, prep uh, coaches don't uh, uh, think that these some conditions are very important. Do you bear any responsibility? Do you take any of the responsibility? Pro probably, for probably coach or owner of prep school. He, he need to to make good setup. But they paid you for a service. Uh, if they pay us for service and if they are not satisfied, we try to find another school. We can back money. Ivan and his father told us they never got their money back. Did you pay him back the $3,000 for the service provided since he didn't finish that? Y y yeah, some some kind of, of money we, we, we pay back. They said they didn't receive any money. Yeah, the, you need to ask again. <laughs> We're heading to the U.S. Embassy here in Belgrade. Um, for a lot of the students that are going to America to study, the process starts uh, right there. Each year, about 800 students come here to receive a highly coveted student visa. Amanda Tyson is the Deputy Consular Section Chief at the U.S. Embassy in Serbia. What kind of uh, students do you have come in here asking for visas? We do have a lot of athletes come. Um, for, for basketball, volleyball, tennis, water polo. Um, Serbs are very kind of athletic people. Are you aware of the role of some of these recruiting agencies? We do want students to know that their primary goal is to make money, so they should make sure they do their own research and not just rely on the recruiting agency. How do you decide when to say yes or no, when like, to accept a visa request? We decide based on the law. The law requires that someone on a student visa be going primarily to study. It also requires that they can pay for those studies. So if they have a full scholarship, that's really easy. It does sound easy. All an aspiring athlete needs is an I-20 form issued by a school certified by Homeland Security. Something shady coaches and agents in the prep school scene have figured out how to exploit. Foreign students at all levels bring in $30 billion a year to the U.S. economy. And government sources tell us this much money may impede meaningful change. Do you think that the Department of Homeland Security should be doing more to verify that these schools are actually proper schools to receive these students? Um, I think the Department of Homeland Security does what they can, and in fact, when they hear about these stories, they are the ones that generally go investigate them. The Student Exchange and Visitor Program, the branch of Homeland Security responsible for its student visa program, declined to be interviewed. But in an email said, students are ultimately responsible for maintaining their non-immigrant status while studying in the U.S. SEVP works closely with the Department of State and ICE, Schools and individuals who try to manipulate the student visa system for personal gain are being held accountable for their actions. How do you feel personally when you hear some of these cases? Uh, I'm very disappointed and disgusted that somebody would do that to, to a student. It does surprise me that, that people would take advantage of kids who are, you know, 17 or 18 years old and don't know any better. You know, one child who's been in a horrible situation is definitely one too many. Despite being screwed over by the prep school industry, the kids we met are moving on with their lives. Stefan Nakic finally landed what he'd been hoping for since he got to the United States, a college scholarship. I'm more than happy, honestly. When I was coming here, everybody was telling me that the United States is the country of opportunities. Well, not until now, when I came to Lake Wales, I didn't have a real opportunity, and I think I'm making the most of it now. He's now the starting shooting guard for Polk State College. Will you take a picture of the oh, first oh, place? Oh, Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming. You. Thank you for coming. The three other boys Laura Donnelly saved are now in college, too. As for their former school, Faith Baptist, 
the northern campus was shut down. The southern one was stripped of its ability to enroll international students and remains under criminal investigation. I want them to be able to say everything they were promised came true. I want them to be able to go back home and see their families and say, uh, we did it. Everything that we wanted to do, we did it. A few years after his ordeal at West Virginia Prep, Deji Adekunle is now playing professional basketball in Germany, pursuing his dream in another foreign country. Back in Serbia, Ivan Jakšić is in college, studying engineering and playing basketball for a local club. He says that after his experience in an American jail, he never wants to return to the United States. The prep school that he was supposed to attend but never did, Evelyn Mack Academy, closed in the summer of 2017, but is still under criminal investigation. These boys are gonna have a hard time trusting people because of what they went through. It's not just crushing dreams and, and taking advantage of kids. They were abused. There's every reason to believe that more kids will be abused. Just listen to the man behind the West Virginia prep scam, Daniel Hicks. You were just recently released from prison. Yeah. What are your plans for the future? Open up another school, run another prep school. Really? Yes, it'll be open by next year. Does that surprise you? It absolutely surprises it me. It should surprise you. You just got in trouble for it opening should, a it should, prep it should surprise you. Do you think you're going to be allowed to open another prep school? Why wouldn't I? Let me explain something to you. Just, they can't, they can't stop me. Because that's like saying you can't open up another business. This person can't open up another business. The honest truth is they can't because legally, what can they do to me?